Ireland are the best rugby team on the planet. Just kidding. Calm down, all you Springbok fans. But they have beaten world champions South Africa in Durban. Hello amateurs, welcome back to the channel, here with you throughout the summer series and beyond, so hit subscribe down below to make sure you don't miss out on any future episodes. Now then, this game turned out to be the Irish walking wounded against the South African soon to be wounded, as it was an absolute bloodbath right from the kickoff, and it was a bit of a stop-start game overall. There was a lot of injuries, a lot of stoppages, quite a few things for the TMO, TMO to look at, but that really, honestly, didn't diminish this from being an incredible spectacle in my mind anyway and it got off to an absolutely physical start really super physical with Kelleher smashing Quagga Smith on the first kickoff receipt within 90 seconds LaRue Willie LaRue had gone off with a HIA and he stayed off not to come back on Franco Moster had blood pouring from his head and it was just an unbelievable start to the game. There were a couple of turnovers and all sorts going on. Eben Etzebeth was leading a really physical, aggressive South African defence with huge line speed. But he got caught offside early doors for a 3-0 uh, scoreline to Ireland. South Africa got an entry and they tried this little planned line-out move where they hit up into the midfield and then Faf de Klerk did a left-footed box kick kind of back over his shoulder to the way they just came interesting that they probably just picked up that Ireland don't cover that too much but it came to nothing in the end shortly afterwards the bloodbath continued with Eben Etzebeth off with what looked like a massive cut on his forehead certainly tons of blood pouring out of the big man um, Jamie Osborne who was brilliant at fullback I thought today uh conceded a penalty when he took somebody out in the air which gave South Africa an entry and this was really their first kind of real bit of play in the game but that ended when Andre Pollard put in a really sort of bad it was, was it a crossfield kick was it a crossfield bomb not really sure but it was really easy to deal with for Ireland Pollard had a bit of a dodgy game throughout and that was where it started really for me fortunately for South Africa Jack Crowley returned the favour soon afterwards kicking the ball out of the full but Ireland were playing lots of phases the way that we know that Ireland can, not quite with the same fluency of the Sexton era, but man, they were just tipping balls on, lots of little small passes near the line, and they were getting through South Africa at times. Uh, McCarthy had a big charging run, um, Doris carrying the ball as he does, but unfortunately found Oxen Che on one carry, and that carry ended very soon afterwards. Ox, the big man, I think had one of the best games I've ever seen him play today. Carrying, tackling, scrummaging, obviously. But Ireland were really on top and they were getting through phases. And although South Africa were putting some big hits in every now and again, Ireland were ma managing to maintain momentum and territory and possession. Then, in an absolute rascal cheekiness, they pull off almost exactly the same move as last week, which led to kind of... Connor Murray scoring and who scored this week Connor Murray again from a drop goal I think it played an extra phase this time and it was the backs that got involved this time uh they couldn't let the forwards have all the all the fun so it was Osborne who played it ball sorry who took the ball back inside clean through he had to get an extra pass in there to Henshaw before Murray got in and it was 10-0 after 15 minutes and honestly probably deserved I think Ireland were by far the better team here Again, injuries, stoppages continues. Etzebeth came back on with that bandaged head, which meant RG Snayman went off. But then before the game could restart, Mostert went off, which meant RG Snayman came back on again. Didn't know whether he was coming or going. Ty Furlong had treatment on a hamstring. And at the very next scrum, Oxen Che had a massive, massive scrum. I wonder whether that was an effect. I watched Furlong for a little while after that. He didn't seem to be carrying it or, or worried about it too much. It was maybe just a big scrum from Unche. That ended with a penalty and the first points on the board for South Africa. But Ireland was still playing. Ireland was still dominant. And really, um, at this stage of the game, it was it, uh, South Africa were really finding it hard to stop Ireland. And Ireland had another chance when Nash went down the right-hand side and he cut in and he had Ringrose back outside him. And if he could have got the ball to Ringrose earlier, I feel sure that he would have been in in the corner. 
it was tough on Nash because this is this was a half chance really, but it's the type of chance that the real good footballing wingers like Mac Hanson, Mac Hansen, like Will Jordan, they execute these ones, and it's what sets them apart as being the real elite wingers. That'll be a learning one for Nash, but I really do think that was a chance for Ireland. South Africa also had a chance, and this was a bit of play by Pollard that I think was so good it caught other people unawares. It definitely caught the uh, Irish defence unawares as Lowe was facing inwards. Colby on the outside didn't expect the pass to come as soon because Pollard really ran at the line on a short side and got ball through his hands so quickly that Colby was kind of on the back foot and just knocked the ball on when he would have been away down the sideline. But I think this was class play by Pollard and Colby didn't read it in time. Ireland were attacking well, as I said, but they did have one issue that I picked out with their carrying, and it was all Robbie Henshaw. Robbie Henshaw, who, by the way, I've been lauding on this channel all season as playing the best rugby of his career, I think, but his carrying was a bit upright today. He got caught up high quite often, and then it was a wrestle to get to the ground, and as such, the, the ruck then the ruck height became quite high, and at the very best for Ireland, when he carried it, it was slow ball or bad ball, but then on the third time, Quagga Smith got a charge down off the back of one of these really sort of awkward rucks that Ireland had as a result of a Henshaw carry. And they nearly scored. The people in commentary and on social media and stuff think Caelan Doris got away with something in one of the rucks there. A bit of dark arts. I couldn't see it from where I was. But, you know, these are the, these are the things that you try uh, when it's desperate. Quagga wasn't going to score himself, but it looked like South Africa might have done afterwards. But South Africa did score next with a penalty from another scrum, 6-10. Um, but they gave it away, straight away. And this is it happened for Wales a lot earlier in the day. If you've just scored, you don't want to give a dumb penalty away straight afterwards. And this one was Peter Seftatoy, who you do not expect to see that kind of thing. As he shepherd, shepherded Henshaw away from a kick, uh, which Ireland then slotted the penalty for 6-13. Again, Ireland have been so dominant, but... These next few phases, South Africa really damaged themselves. Pollard kicked the ball dead from a scrum, or rather into the in-goal area. Ireland touched it down just in time. You have to do that immediately to get the scrum back at halfway. Otherwise, it's just general play. I think Carl Dixon was verbally said something along those lines. They wavered for a second, but then got the ball down. Anyway, so scrum, which led to a James Lowe trip down the left-hand side. Really perfect chip, but the ball five metres from the line. Pollard got caught in possession, carried over the line and a scrum five to Ireland. And Doris looked for all money like he was going to get over in the corner. He came back blind, but Peter Steftatoy arrived from absolutely nowhere, managed to tackle the ball, stop Doris. But Ireland still looked like they were inevitable. It looked like they were going to score. They had so many phases close to the line. The South African defence actually looked fractured. It didn't look like it was getting stronger, which it often does in those situations. But Ireland knocked on and it just it left them with just the penalty. But just the penalty gave them a 16-6 lead at half-time and, I would say, thoroughly deserved. Some trends for the first half. It was slow-paced. Lots of stoppages, but when the get the ball was in play, it was fierce, it was intense, and it was physical. And it was mostly the Ireland attack against the South African defence for the majority of this half. Um, there was lots of play, lots of attacking phases, and it was it was a really good watch. I pick out Jamie Osborne for Ireland. He was running really dangerously from the back for them, and I've already mentioned him a couple of times. Oxen Che was mint in that first half. Second half gets underway, and Ireland nick a South African line out straight away. But that led to Sasha Feinberg and Zom Zulu having a wild run back through the middle. This guy looks absolutely electric. Ireland recover um, as a, a Fafta Clerk kick got diffused. They kick it long. So another South African line out. And exactly the same thing happened again. Ireland nicked it. They kicked it to Sasha Feinberg and Ngumo Zulu, who makes another incredible bake. But this one led to a penalty for South Africa and a 9-16. And this was a start of a huge number of penalty kicks for South Africa in this second half. The next one came after Doris was yellow carded for a crock roll. I wasn't aware that a crock roll was immediately a yellow card because there was a crock roll in the Wales game and that wasn't yellow carded. It was just a penalty. I'd, I'd be interested to know what the um, the referees have been told regarding this. I don't know. Uh, but anyway, he was yellow carded. 
And this was now a huge phase of the game. South Africa had started to just get their noses going forward um, with those runs from the fullback just really sort of getting their energy up. And South Africa came in waves and waves and waves. They got another penalty for 15-16 and the energy just got even higher. RG Snayman put Malcolm Marks clean through and it looked for all money that South Africa were going to score. But Jack Crowley made a really good defensive read. He just dummied off Marks and went and tackled the player that Marks passed to. Uh, however, the next phase, another penalty, 18-16. South Africa now in front. But the, the uh, yellow card was over. Doris returned to the field along with Peter Umani, who carried his first ball. Quagga Smith kind of launched himself over the ruck. Where, and it was a ruck, and there was no way he was supporting his own body weight. He complained about it, saying he was still on his feet. But if your hips are resting on the player that's on the floor, if that player wasn't there, you're off your feet. And So I think this is an absolutely fair penalty, which put Ireland back in the lead at 19-18, back to 15 players with Doris back on. And again, you just wonder, is that the swing? The fact that they kind of weathered, weathered uh, in inverted comments, the storm while Doris was off, and then still have the lead when it came back on. Um, you know, maybe. South Africa then got a penalty which, in retrospect, looked a little bit lucky. Because Nash was a judge to knock the ball on, which McCarthy caught immediately. Uh, as therefore offside. But the replays kind of were inconclusive at best. Of whether Nash had even played the ball. In any case, it was kicked for South Africa to get into the lead at 21-19 again. And then Osborne, who was fantastic throughout, had a moment, just a real moment where it was a real tough one. Grant Williams and South Africa scrum off, kicked a long touchline kick and Osborne wasn't in position to catch it on the full and it was going to be really close to the touchline. So if he did catch it and then step out, it was tricky. So he let it bounce, but the ball kicked on and stayed in field. He then got tackled into touch himself which led to a South African uh, line-out. But Ireland did a brilliant job of holding that up uh, to get a scrum. But Steenkamp on at loose head for Ox and Che. And Bielam seems to really struggle against him. He did last week and he did in this scrum here. Bielam's really good at getting his chest low to the ground and maintaining a good scrummage in position. But against Steenkamp, he seems to want to crank him every now and again and it was that was what happened on this scrum Bealham's shoulders pointing directly down to the ground leading to a penalty for South Africa and another kick and 24-19 South Africa just stretching away a little bit now but Ireland did get another entry there was a there was a phase of play when it was turnover turnover kick mistake error and it led to a free kick to Ireland five meters out and they got close they got really close but they were held up Goal line dropout and um, Kieran Frawley hit a massive drop goal. I mean, massive. More than outside the, the uh, 10 metre line. Massive. So what could have been a really sort of low energy moment for Ireland, having not scored when they looked like they you know, were really close to, it's now back game on again at 24-22. And I mean, really, who knows which way this game's going to go. South Africa have had a huge amount of energy, but Ireland seem to be back in it now. Um and then there was a really bit of a smart bit of play by Cowlin Blade on at scrum half for Connor Murray, who I think also had a really excellent game. Maybe the slow nature of it, the stop start nature of it, made him be able to keep up with it. You know, he's, he's a little bit slower in his later years now, but I thought Murray had a really, really good game. But Blade was on. And Ireland got a really quick ruck after Kurt Arenza had made a tackle. Arenza was just getting back up onto his feet and Blade picked up the ball and ran directly into him. Arenza could have, you know, arms up, back off, but it's just too tempting. So he made the tackle and that gave the penalty to Ireland. And with five minutes left, it was now all about territory. You just want to be in the opposition territory for Ireland so that if they get a penalty, they can kick it. And for South Africa, so that if they give away a penalty, it's not kickable. Uh, so there was a lot of sort of to and fro in here, a lot of kick tennis, a little bit going on. Ireland had a few chances during this period. Robbie Henshaw threw one into touch, which again, I think it was a good bit of play, but James Lowe didn't read it. It was it was into space, and I just don't think they were on the same um, wavelength. Kieran Frawley then kicked past one into touch, and it looked like Ireland were getting a little bit desperate, a little bit, you know, let's just try everything, let's just give it... Um, 
uh, full beans here and see what we can do. But it did come. It came. Ireland had a scrum, which they really locked out well. I mentioned about Bielham getting his chest towards the ground. He got himself in that really beautiful scrummaging position that he can do. Like He gets so low to the ground, but still maintains a flat back. And he managed it for this scrum. Kieran Frawley on the loop round put in an absolute cracking grubber that went fizzing along the touchline. And I wonder whether Sasha Feinberg Ungomazulu. That's a real mouthful for me. I need to practice that one. I wonder whether he had to play it. I'm not certain whether he did. It would have been a gamble because Lowe was very close onto him. But I wonder. I'm not certain he did have to play it. Anyway, he did. He carried it out, which gave uh, the line-out entry to Ireland. They played one phase up the middle with Caelan Doris carrying hard. Two phases, actually, because Doris got back up onto his feet. Then back to Frawley, drop goal from 40 metres for the win. And it was wild. South Africa complained. They said that there was an obstruction by Doris. That's why I remember he didn't do it the last carry. But there was nothing in that whatsoever. These two teams still absolutely grating at each other, even after the final whistle. But Ireland did get the win. Uh, and and I said in the in the pre-game to this, if they could manage it, if they could get this with all their sort of injuries at the end of this season to go and win a second test in South Africa or the second test in South Africa would be huge. And it is huge. South Africa for themselves, they could not get a foothold in this game in the first half. I thought Andre Pollard for the most part was just a little bit off in this game. They eventually ground their way back into it, but they couldn't stop that drop goal play at the end, no matter what they did. Ireland, huge credit to them at the end of a monster season with all those injuries to, and, and to be so dominant in the first half, to have that clawed away from them and then to find the fortitude to come back and win it at the end. I mean, that's just incredible resolve, guts and, and talent as well. For South Africa, Oxen Che was amazing and Eben Etzebeth also, I just thought, was a physical freak throughout just just doing what he does, just implanting himself into every contact situation. For Ireland, Caelan Doris just never stops working. That guy, he's so influential, so physical as well for not the biggest player. Jamie Osborne catching high balls looked like he'd been doing it for years. I mean, I know he has played fullback previously, but obviously not so much at this level. He's played mostly centre for Leinster this season. And then Kieran Frawley, just to have the nuts to to come on and try and make the big plays at the end of a really important game and executing as well. He missed one at the end of the Champions Cup final, but he nailed this one and he celebrated and he deserved to. But for me, the best thing about this result is that this rivalry absolutely continues. And what's going to be next in this meeting of two rugby giants? The debate will go on. It will rage in the comments sections of social media everywhere. And I love it. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. Anything I've missed that you think was really important? Which players did you think were the best today? While you're down there, give this video a thumbs up. And you can subscribe there. You can watch that one next. And do not forget to get out and play.